Hey everybody, this is Carol Grace Anderson, and this is a new show, brand new today. It's called Paw Prince of Wisdom, Life Lessons from My Dogs. And I don't know about you, but I have learned so much from having dogs most of my life. And I bet you have too, but you probably never stop to think about it. So that's where I come in, to remind you of some great lessons. For example, dogs are enthusiastic. I mean, they're happy it's Monday. Tomorrow they'll be happy it's Tuesday because they're just happy to be. And if we were more enthusiastic, imagine how our lives would be so much better. So that's one thing we can learn from our dogs. We can also learn about friendship. Boy, are they good friends. They are unconditional, loving friends. And that's what we all need, our great friends. And we can learn more about our friends with our dogs. What else can we learn? Oh, we can learn about laughter. If, if you're not laughing five or ten times a day at your dog, you're missing something. You need to uh, look a little bit closer because your dogs have funny expressions. I mean, I like to uh, see dogs that are dressed up. If you have any pictures of your dog that is dressed up, show us. Share them with us. Because dogs have all kinds of expressions and they can make us laugh. They are just funny. So that's another lesson. What's another one? Flexible. They are so flexible. Oh, we're going to walk this way. Oh, that's wonderful. You see, they're just open to anything. Imagine our lives if we were a little more open to change because, as I like to say, change is more than nickels and dimes. We're all faced with change of all sorts. The older we get, the more change that we're going to see in our lifetime. So we need to begin to be more flexible, be open to change and realize it's going to happen so we might as well accept it. Another lesson we can learn from dogs, simplicity. There are so many people now who are trying to downsize. They're moving to new places that are smaller. Have you seen those tiny houses on HGTV? Because people want to simplify. And if you consider your dog, just think how they love simple things. They're happy with a nap, a bowl of food, a bowl of water, and a walk now and then. If we were interested in simplifying our lives, we can just follow their lead. What's another one? Exercise. They love exercise. And the more we can take them for a walk, take them out, run with them, take them to the park, they love all that because they need exercise and so do we. So that's one very, very good excuse to have a dog is you're going to have to have a lot more exercise. And, you know, dogs are comforting. During this past week with that terrible massacre in Orlando, they were sending groups of dogs to give comfort to those people in, in Orlando, the, the victims and their families. Dogs are very, very comforting, and they, they want to share love. They want to be compassionate. And they, they say that when you are around a dog, your blood pressure even lowers. That's pretty good. Your blood pressure gets lower by being with a dog. So there's a lot of health benefits. And in, in this show, we're going to meet twice a week, and we are going to do all kinds of fun things besides talking about what we can learn about life with our dogs. And I wrote the book, Paw Prince of Wisdom, so I'm taking some stories out of there and just some of my memories. And we're going to talk about also what, what creates a healthy pet. We're going to go ask the veterinarians. So we'll have some segments that are all about ask the vet. What should be a healthy weight for our doggy? Uh, when should we take our dog to the vet? What are some telltale signs that says, whoops, time to go to the vet? Or maybe he's just got an upset stomach. Is there something over the counter we could give our doggy? Because it might not be an emergency. So we'll ask the experts on that. And we're also going to uh, visit, we'll have special guests, and we're also going to visit some of the neighborhood dogs. And we'd like you to share your ideas and your pictures and your, your lessons that you're learning from your dogs. Share it with us. This is uh, interactive for all of us to, to be part of. And uh, I got a great quote from my friend Debbie Hupp, and they put it on, in the back cover, by the way. But this is what she said. Pet parents are relatively sure they know their fur babies. But after reading this book, 
I'm convinced that our forever friends know more about what we need to learn. Isn't that good? Thanks, Debbie Hub, for that. You know, last night was a championship playoff game. Did, did any of you get to see it? Wow, what a game. It was hard to go to sleep after that. But, uh, you know, it's it was an amazing championship because Cleveland uh, hasn't won in, in decades. And they were down three games to one. And here, last night, was the very final game. And through persistence, they not only came back after being down three to one, but they... Uh, one in the last few seconds and it reminds me that their persistence is what really got them to the winner's circle and to, to win the trophy and our dogs are very persistent you notice how our dogs will keep after something if they want you to go take them for a walk or if they're ready to eat or they're ready to play they will keep reminding you they'll say hey it's time for this or time for that they're persistent and we need to be persistent ourselves in our life. What are your goals? What are your dreams? Don't ever give up on them. You know, um, Zig Ziglar, the late Zig Ziglar was a great speaker and uh, he, he spoke a lot about persistence. And one of the great quotes that he gave was, it doesn't matter how many times you fall, it's how many times you get back up again. Isn't that good? And that really, was so much about that, that game last night. No matter how many times they, they had lost the game, they came back the final game to win. So persistence is something we can learn from our dogs and, and enthusiasm. Okay, here we are. Now we have a better connection. Sorry about that. Hey, it's our first show, so we have a few glitches that may happen. Um, but the enthusiasm of, of a dog, they celebrate the grand opening of a can of dog food. I mean, they, they are just so happy. And we can choose to be happy. Every day is a choice. You know, you can think of that old adage, is the glass half empty or half full? Well, the glass can be refilled. And you can refill your own glass. So it can always be half full or all the way full. That's the choice you have. And every day, Every morning you wake up, it's not only a thing to be grateful for, but you have loads of choices every single day. So I hope you'll remember that. Now, we have a bunch of dogs in our family, and two of mine, uh, as they say, cross the, uh, <laughs> the bridge, the rainbow bridge, uh, but we still have lots of dogs in our family because we love dogs. In fact, uh, Let's see, my brother and his wife have a dog named Bones that they rescued from the North Shore Animal Rescue Place. And he's a wonderful dog. And my niece and her husband and family, they have Cooper and they have Lucy. One big dog and one little dog. And my nephew and his family have three dogs. They have Rockstar, they have Butters, and they have Moose. And they also have triplets, so their nine-year-old triplets each have a big dog. And they, they love all animals. We'll, we'll talk to them sometime. I hope I can interview them for you. And my sister-in-law, Cindy, she has a dog who's a Pomeranian, and it is as cute as, as you can imagine. It looks, in fact, like uh, a teddy bear. It, lo it looks like a stuffed animal, but it's a real dog. So I hope that you have a nice variety of dogs and, and have had. Uh, through the years, we've had many dogs. Uh, I remember my family had a dog named Frankenstein, and uh, he was such a trip. He was like a human. In fact, whenever we'd have big family meals, uh, my niece reminded me yesterday, he had his own seat at the table, and he would sit there, uh, like he owned the place and he would sit next to my dad and we'd all be eating and he'd just be watching very patiently just very happy to be there and uh, we had a dog named Spaghetti we had uh, my nephew had a dog named Bark and uh, my sister and her husband had a dog named Jesse who was a uh, a mix of collie all these are rescue dogs and um, it was such a sweet dog and in fact it was a life-saving dog because one night Jesse was barking like crazy and it just wouldn't stop talk about persistence Jesse knew that this was important 
and he finally woke up everybody and they looked out the window and the garage right next to their house was engulfed in flames and Jesse wanted to let them know hey we got to do something and they got the fire department out there and that dog Jesse saved the whole family and saved their home saved everything dogs are just so smart and so helpful and uh, boy I, I know a lot of good quotes too about dogs that I, I wish if you knew some send them in we'll read them here's one dogs are how people would be if the important stuff is all that mattered to us think about that dogs are how people would be if the important stuff is all that mattered to us that was written by Ashley Lorenzana but if you know of a good dog quote pass it on to us because we'll share it there's so many good things written about dogs and uh, we'd love to hear what you have to say um, I'm gonna be doing uh, some book signings I'm going to uh, be talking here every Monday and Friday so that'll be fun and we're gonna take more lessons about what we can learn about life not just for us but from our dogs to have a better life and uh, you know friendship, comfort, all of those things are very, very important in our lives. And they can help us to nurture those parts of us. The simplicity, I mean, a dog is happy to just uh, take a, a piece of paper that may be uh, messed up and play with it and have fun with it or take wrapping paper and have fun with that. Dogs are simple. They're simply easy to love and they love us no matter what. I mean, each dog is different and I'd love to hear your dog stories and see uh, someone just posted that they love puppies. So do I. Um, let's see, more people are joining. People uh, say animals are like humans. Awesome. But as we do, animals need taken care of too. That is a great point, Lori Harmon, because Animals do need to be taken care of and we need to take care of ourselves. If we don't take care of ourselves, we can't worry about taking care of anybody else. We have got to have self-care and so many of us are caregivers and we care so much about people and we want to give our all. But when we are giving, 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 we're going to give out if we don't take care of us. You know that old adage about when you're flying on a plane and they always say in case of an emergency those masks will come down from over top and make sure you put that over your nose and mouth and make sure you're breathing comfortably oh and then if you have a small child with you put their mask on after you put yours on and you know that's powerful and no matter how many times you hear it it's important to remember that because if you don't take care of you no one else can take care of, uh, can be taken care of so we owe it to ourselves to take care of ourselves and take care of our dogs. So whenever you're taking care of your dog, say to yourself, am I taking care of myself as, as well as I'm taking care of my dog? Because it's something that we have to really uh, uh, respond to every single day. We have got to have self-care. I don't call it selfish. I call it self-care. And self-care is really, really important. Otherwise, we're going to burn out. And boy, I've studied a lot about burnout and how dangerous it can be. And it's very unhealthy. So we need to have a simpler life that we can handle and um, realize that uh, we can do whatever, but we have to be strong. We have to be uh, very uh, healthy, just like we want our dogs to be healthy. We want them to have plenty of exercise and all that good stuff. So that's what I, I hope that you will also uh, consider taking care of yourself. And I bet your dog is such a big part of the family, isn't it? Because they are just like humans in so many ways. They love to be with us. And they, they'll wait and wait and wait persistently, just like this picture of the dog just waiting, waiting by the door. For you to come home send us your pictures by the way send us your questions your pictures uh, any funny stories next Friday we're gonna talk about how laughter and dogs go hand in hand and how funny they can be so we want you to share in what that is going to be like what has been some funny experiences or stories 
that you have experienced with your dog or your puppy or whatever because uh, there's so much that can be said for dogs uh, really enhancing our attitudes. It's uh, all about our attitude, which again is a choice. And if you look at your dog's attitude, you, you will see that they just love to be, be here, be now. They live in the present, you know, they, the, in the present. They don't worry about yesterday. They don't worry about tomorrow. They are right here, right now. And that's how we all should live, more in the present, because we're really going to uh, uh, live in the future or the past, and we're not in the future or the past. <laughs> we have to be right here, right now. So I encourage you to uh, check out our uh, book. It's available, by the way, at Cracker Barrel. And if they're out, they'll get more in. It's also available right now at Amazon.com if you want to get you a copy, but it's a sweet book. It makes a nice gift for any of your dog-loving friends. I also would like you to uh, watch my friend Britt Savage. She's doing a show on here called Wolf Driver News, and she is a hoot. She's very talented. She's a great voiceover person. She's got a fabulous voice. Uh, um, she's just such a pro. And uh, also Dean Miller who's a friend of mine, and he's doing a show on this channel. It's called The Dog Counselor. And so he'll be with you once or twice a week, and he's very smart, and he really knows his stuff about dogs. So we got through our first show. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll come back Friday at 7 Eastern. We'd like to give a special shout-out to our wonderful engineer, Coleman Murphy. <laughs> he's, given, he's given his own... Uh, Okay, but uh, doggone it, time is up, people. So I hope I'll see you Friday at 7 o'clock Eastern, and give us your feedback because we want you to be part of the show. Thanks so much.